Alright, so I thought we'd try something a little different this week. Instead of going over a new concept, I thought it'd be fun to take a deeper look into the running concepts that we talked about last week, specifically the inside zone, outside zone, power, and counter. In order to take a closer look at these plays, I had my friend send me several clips of himself playing Madden. Using them, we can see what the line is supposed to do, and we can also note some mistakes he makes along the way in his reads. On outside zone, the running back reads from outside end and is usually taught to read the hips of the lineman. If they're able to reach their defender and pin them inside, then the running back continues running outside. If they can't reach their guy and instead is caught on the inside, then the running back is taught to cut back. So far he has pressed the outside like he's supposed to, but note the hips on this tight end and tackle. They weren't able to reach their guy, which opens up a cutback lane. Since he fails to take this cutback lane, he loses out on a big game. This is another example of the outside zone. Note how this tight end is able to get the edge on his man. Since my friend correctly follows the hips outside this time, he is able to convert this play into a big game. This is an inside zone. You can tell because the blockers are more concerned with moving downhill instead of moving laterally. While the linemen do a good job of moving their double team, they fail to come off the combo block and none of the linebackers are blocked. This should be a touchdown and those linemen will probably have extra sprints in Monday's practice. Note when Randy Clements, FSU's last O-line coach, talked about holding onto their double teams, this is what it was supposed to look like. I love this play. When you see linemen with their helmets filled with tomahawk stickers, it's because of plays like this. Watch this guard. Note the good double team, but unlike the last clip, this is what you're supposed to do afterwards. He comes off the double team and combo blocks this scraping linebacker. If he doesn't do this, then the running back probably loses yards, but since he does, they gain 17, and all credit should go to number 79. But it's a messed up world, and all his hard work gets attributed to our boy Dalvin Cook. Let's take a closer look at this power play. I can tell his power because this fullback tries his little heart out to kick out block this end. Well, he's almost gotten himself in good position, but it's not quite good enough and the guard has to come in and clean up his mess. This counterplay is textbook. Watch this fullback lead through the hole and block a linebacker, and this guard pull around and kick out the scraping outside linebacker. This is why these are called gap running plays. Realistically, it's easier on the running back as well. He has a specific gap to run through, and in a perfect world, the hole should be this clear every time. No reads necessary. Now this is probably my favorite of his plays. This is another example of a counter, but our lead blocker, this tight end, gets lost halfway through the play and ends up in no man's land. So they lose out on a potential touchdown. Well, this was fun, so let me know if this is something y'all would like to see more of. If we do this again, we'll probably take a closer look at the run pass options in the game. I really wish I could get access to better film, but in the meantime, there's still a lot we can learn from Madden.